And what's going on, Los Angeles? Welcome to LAFB's edition of Salute to Troy, live from Radio Row. We have a very special guest here with us today, Bo Hassan, past USC Trojan quarterback. Mo, thanks so much for being here. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me, Jamal. This is awesome. Awesome. Well, Mo, just why don't we start off with how's, uh, how's your Radio Row experience been going so far? Man, it is nuts. This is my first experience out here. I don't know if you guys have been here in the past, mm -hmm. but especially the setting out here in Las Vegas, like with the parties, we were just talking about all the events, the gambling. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot of distractions, believe me. I'm but always getting trouble out here. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of work to do too, so it's fun. Uh, it's really cool just kind of walking by and recognizing so many faces, old teammates, uh, people in the media, legends. Like I just saw uh, Deion Sanders over there, Cam Newton. The Rock. I was like fangirling The Rock, dude, on Pat McAfee. Oh yeah. Uh, so I mean, it's. I mean, if you're like a sports fan, this is like heaven for you. You know. I think what always gets me is when you see you kind of compare the entourage sizes of like yeah. Prime, Prime's entourage was wasn't as big as Russell Wilson's was two years ago in yeah. LA, but okay. it was close. It was close. Yeah, yeah, Russell Wilson's entourage two years ago was like a small convention. That yeah. was oh something else. Yeah. So <laughs> Stephen A. Smith was like that yesterday. Okay. He was like a rock star. It was yeah. unbelievable. I've never seen. It was like you would think this is the Rolling Stones walking. <laughs> Yeah, it's absolutely it's nuts. <laughs> Wild. Wow. So, so coming out here, were you out here, you know, promoting things, just kind of taking all the, the it in, just enjoying yourself, or was the the yeah. mission to create? What's kind of the the goal of being out here right yeah, now? Yeah, I mean, a few things. So I'm still playing football, but I'm also like really interested in the media side of things. And so I've got my podcast, Momentum Podcast, and we've had tons of U USC players, former teammates, that kind of stuff. Great name, by the way. Yeah, Thank you. yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's a pun. I'm Mo. <laughs> <laughs> I caught that. Yeah, yeah, and so. Yeah, I mean, I'm really interested in a media career. And so just get some reps, hang out with some friends, have fun. Uh, what's not to like about it? So. Oh, fantastic, yeah. Mo. So segueing a little bit to USC football, obviously yeah. a, a topic near and dear to all our hearts. Mo, what's your take on kind of the off season here? A lot happened over the course of the season. Uh, Lincoln Riley's kind of approach with the new staff. Yeah. Just what's your overall take of how 2023 went and, and what you're expecting in 24? Yeah, I mean, it was a disappointing season. I had SC going to the playoffs. I don't know what you guys, yeah. what your prediction with Caleb yeah, it was, was. It was very similar. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, when you have a season that disappointing, I think you need to make huge changes. And that's, that's what he did with Coach Grinch, obviously. He brings an entirely new defensive staff. Uh, Coach Lynn, I think, is going to bring a different level of physicality that's been missing with even under Coach Helen as well in the past what, maybe six, seven years that USC hasn't seen in a while since maybe the Taylor Mays era, right? Yeah. And, and he's on the staff and I love Taylor. Um, and so even the assistant coaching hires with Coach Henderson from the Rams, like that's unbelievable, dude. Yeah. Like a guy who coached Aaron Donald and now you've got him in your system at the college level. If you're a D lineman around the country, like who wouldn't want to be coached by him? Um, you've got Coach Enns from N NDSU, um, which that still blows my mind how they how they got him, yeah. right? And this dude won like a million FCS national championships, now takes a linebacker coaching job at USC. So they're fully loaded. Um, and, it's, and the Big Ten is going to be a, a really interesting season. So Yeah. When you think of, it's kind of a little different question, but when you think of, you mentioned Derek uh, Henderson, you know, how the gravitas he has and what he's meant to the NFL, how do you say no to that? Was there ever a, a coach in your career, collegiate career, where you're like, okay, that's a guy I want coaching me? Maybe you didn't get the opportunity to, but you're like, if that guy was my coach or yeah. I had the opportunity to work with him, it'd be night and day difference. I mean, I think at the call spot here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, it's honestly, it's kind of a layup because I was with Coach Riley at yeah. SC. Yeah. And I didn't choose him. Like, he came in, I came under Coach Helen, mm -hmm. right? And I love Coach Helen. Um, but Lincoln Riley's offensive schemes are second to none, at least at the college level. To me, he's the best schemer of football. Yeah. And, playing quarterback like this dude's last three or four guys all won Heisman trophies so I'm like dude this is as good as it gets now unfortunately I got injured and Caleb came in and the whole nine everyone knows yeah. um but from a learning standpoint being in those meetings every day learning from a guy that smart that's been through all those big games and championships and, and that pedigree was really neat for me yeah so. real, real quick to follow up on that because I, I think so many people, when they when they think of Lincoln Riley and his offense, it's just like, oh, it's, it's the air raid. It's the air raid, right? right? And we saw last year there was some, the offense was still, what, top three in the nation, but there were some struggles. So can you talk to, like, listeners and fans, like, what makes his offense so great? It's not just a basic air raid. Obviously, yeah. there's the concepts, but what makes it so great in the college game? Yeah, Ryan, that is a huge misconception because I played under the air raid. So that Coach Leach system that Graham Harrell had at USC. And that's as close to air raid as you're going to get, yeah. which no knocking on it. I, there's quarterbacks have had a lot of success on it, but it's a different thing. Now, Coach Riley has, uh, he is committed to the running game. And there are actually similarities to Iowa's running game, 
right? Uh, the, the GT pulling game that he does, like the creativity with the RPO game, the quarterback run. There's a reason why most of his quarterbacks have been dual threat. Um, so he's added so much more to what Coach Leach has done. That's kind of the, that's the foundation of the passing game. Yeah. But it's, it's a different entity in itself. I don't even know how to define it. It's kind of just the, the Coach Riley offense at this point. There you go. That's yeah. great. <laughs> well, how do you feel about Miller Moss going into 24? And A, just the variation, to your point, of the Lincoln Riley offense with Miller Moss. And then B, just overall the team's adjustment into the Big Ten. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting. Uh, we talked a little bit about this past season with Caleb and the best quarterback in college football, and you only win, what did they win, seven, eight games, yep. right? And so those are huge shoes to fill by anybody. Um, and they brought in the UNLV kid, and so there's going to be an open competition. Um, I think he's a stud. I mean, he was committed to Georgia. So obviously he had huge suitors, yeah. getting him a lot of NIL money, I'm sure. Um, and so I expect them to bring in actually another guy. Uh, after spring ball so mm. they, they'll evaluate after spring ball that's 15 practices mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole spring game element to it bunch of scrimmages live reps involved um, but yeah I, th I think he wants to get as many guys in that room as possible to make the best decision going forwards yeah and you get the portal opening again after spring ball exactly so. there's yeah it's, it's madness how, how weird is it for you to just see how much the college game has changed yeah you know, obviously with nil and all, just the transfer portal like how odd is that for you to be like man it's actually kind of neat because I feel like I've seen both oh, elements. Yeah. The pre-NIO, which seems like a dinosaur era yeah. now, <laughs> and the post-NIO. Um, so I was at that, at that change. And, um, man, it's cool. I mean, especially for someone like myself who's involved in so many things off the field. So I also I run a nonprofit as well, and I couldn't even promote that nonprofit without being dinged by the NCAA. Crazy. And it's like, wow. hey, I'm not profiting anything from this. I'm literally trying to feed the homeless, and I can't put my name on things. Yeah. Um, and so things like that were stupid, right? Um, and so I'm happy you guys are getting paid. Now, obviously, there's a lot of issues with uh, the NIL game and, you know, people being investigated. Like, I, I live down in South Florida, so that's a big thing with, uh, with the boosters down there with the Hurricanes program. And, um, you know, I guess to a certain extent, though, it's always been happening, right? So now it's just out in the open. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, how do you feel about just USC's NIL game moving forward and just their overall position uh, in terms of kind of contention, both with on the field players, off the field resources. Yeah. What do you feel about kind of the next two years, let's say, for USC football? I mean, in theory, like SC should be top five every year, right? And there's a few things kind of in my book in this new NIL era that we were talking about yeah. that defines a championship football team, right? And uh, number one, it's capital, right? And so it's kind of like any startup, any business nowadays, it's like, how much money do you have? It's a salary cap. There's a reason why the New York Yankees have won so many championships and maybe like lower market baseball teams like the Oakland A's have, right? So it's all capital, right? And check, USC's got that. Yeah. With the boosters, with the location and all that. Uh, number two would be recruiting hotbeds. Southern California, you guys know better than anyone, some of the best talent in the country, mm -hmm. right? Uh, CJ Stroud was just here to our right. Yeah. Southern California guy that SC let get out. Uh, Bryce Young was committed to USC. Right. Wins the Heisman Trophy number one pick. Um, so, so many talented guys that, that goes without being said and number three is the coaching staff which we also touched on that usc has so check right best offensive mind now we talk about coach land henderson and all these dudes getting in the building they know what they need in terms of personnel wise um so i mean to me those are the big three things and like anything short of a championship to me is bust within the next three four years yeah love that and we agree obviously so yeah. last question for me and kind of a, a weird one i guess but sc opens the year in Vegas Woo. against LSU. Yeah. Fireworks going to be fun. What's well, kind of your thought on A, that game, but, you know, so many, and I don't want to knock the SEC, but, you know, a lot of these teams, and, you know, even SC last year, you open kind of with a cupcake schedule, yeah. get, get the juices flowing, but they got to come out of the gate hot, playing an SEC favorite in LSU. What, what's kind of your thoughts on opening the season like that? Yeah, I mean, it sets the tone for the season, right? I mean, a win, and you're, you're a top 15, top 10 team. You're looking, you're looking at the playoffs, right? Um, and it doesn't get easier after LSU. That's the thing. It's not like, hey, we're playing LSU and then we've got four easy games, right? Uh, if I remember correctly, they're playing. Are they in Ann Arbor? They play yeah. Michigan. Yep, week three in Ann Arbor. Um, yeah. And now it's a different Michigan football team, obviously, different staff and all that. But it's still the Michigan Wolverines. You're playing a Big Ten schedule. You've got all the best Pac-12 teams, and now you're in the Big Ten. Yeah. Right? So it's amongst the most difficult schedules without the best quarterback in college football with an entirely new defensive staff. So, yeah, there is a lot of room for error, but there's also a lot of room for opportunity. Um, and I think that week one is really going to set the tone. That's fantastic. Well, Mo, I'll, I'll leave you with this. Give me one sleeper 
on offense and one Ooh. sleeper on defense for USC in 24 that maybe folks aren't talking about as much? <sighs> I got to think about that a little bit. So sleepers. Uh, you know who was a sleeper last year? Actually, I'll, I'll touch on your question, but Taj Washington. Yes. Like, why isn't he getting the respect that he deserves? He's I talk make the NFL team very happy. He is, no man. He is. Like, he's going to be an NFL starter for the next decade somewhere. And he's going to go. It's the same thing with Amon. This yeah. dude drops to the fourth round. He's about to make $100 million in a few weeks. <laughs> uh, pro uh, pro, pro dialed, bowler yeah. almost every year. So I think, like, Taj is that dude. Mm -hmm. And I, I just saw a bunch of, but that's, that's a segue. Um, man, sleepers. Um, you know, I, I really like, uh, is Bear Alexander a sleeper? I mean, he's a dog. <laughs> like, <for sure. laughs> he's a dog. You can I mean, say whatever you want. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really want to see how they build these trenches. And so, yeah. so Bear is like a big part of that, obviously. And Coach Nua is one of the best defensive line coaches in the country. There's a reason why he's the only guy on the defensive staff they've kept. Yeah. Like, he coached all those Michigan defensive linemen, um, like Hutchinson and yeah. all those dudes, Mike Morris. Uh, so... There's a reason he stayed. I think Bear Alexander, he's going to be a first-round pick, and he's going to anchor this defense for, uh, for this coming season. Love it. Well, Thank fantastic. Well, Mo, thanks again for the time. Always a, a pleasure. And just know that you're part of the Trojan family, of course. Of course and uh, any time you want to come back on Salute to Troy, red carpet's always open for you. Absolutely. I'm with it. Let's do it. And Momentum Podcast, that's what it's called? Yes. Momentum Podcast. Got to check that out. So, <laughs> but yeah, thanks for joining us. Yes, sir. Thanks, Mo.